Every single time a business hired me as their salesman, profits immediately went up by 500%. You know how? Is it because I'm charismatic? Sure, that's part of it. Is it because I show the customers pictures of their family and where they live? Yeah, that helps as well. But it's the honesty and the quality of the deal that you establish with the customers is what really matters. They get to walk away with a great product and as a bonus, they get to keep their limbs. This is the same my mentor used to tell me all the time. If a customer ever tries to negotiate a better deal, your immediate reaction should be to threaten their life. Turns out every customer values their life more than whatever you're selling. And by extension, they would rather buy than die. It's not that fucking complicated. In every business, you have the top 1% that makes more money than everybody else, right? So let me give you an example. Let's say you're a mortician, right? You bury people for a living, you set up funerals. So the average mortician is gonna, what? Wait for random people to die like a moron, so hopefully he can make 30 grand a year? You know what the 1% mortician does? Goes around every school in his neighborhood, finds the most depressed kids and hands each one of them an AR-15. Two weeks later, he's got enough money to retire for the rest of his life. The difference is that one is waiting for clients, the other one is making them. Does that make sense? You have to be fucking creative. If you're a doctor and you're treating someone with Alzheimer's, keep reminding them to pay. Doesn't matter if they already did. Infinite money glitch. If you run a fire station, consider having a, a cigarette in the woods every once in a while or something. Figure out how to bring business in. All right, everybody, let's do a quick show of hands. How many people here genuinely want to become rich? Of course, everybody does. Here's another question. How many of you are also willing to sell homeless people's organs? Exactly like I thought. See, you guys are looking at it from the perspective of somebody that wants to make a hundred grand a month, but is trying to follow some kind of a rule book. Does that make sense? You know, that homeless guy's organs are gonna get sold. If that money isn't going in your pockets, it's just going in somebody else's. So that's 500 grand a year at least. On the floor, right in front of you, they're just letting somebody else that's coming through to take it away from you. That's a lot of money. If you want to make that kind of money, you've got to go off road. You pick up the phone, you call up the 80-year-old woman down the street, tell her that you work for the IRS and that she owes $200 to the government, and stop fucking pretending like she isn't gonna die two weeks later anyway. Let's talk about property ownership and being a landlord for a second here. So I actually have a lot of tenants. There are single mothers with upwards of five to six kids. Some of them mine. So let's say one of these single mothers tells me that she can't pay her rent. What do I do in that situation? I think kick her out. Okay, I'll tell you exactly why that's something that you should never do. So. Here's the thing, I didn't have my dad growing up, guys. I only had my mom. So I get the struggle, I've seen it. I could never kick a single mother out to the streets. I'm not a monster, I'm a businessman. I make a deal, I offer to take one of the children as payment, their organs can be sold as well. She gets to keep the one bedroom apartment, I get paid triple if not quadruple the amount that I was gonna get paid to begin with. She has one less child to be financially responsible for, so more likely she'll be able to afford rent next time and you know if not another kid can go. That's the great thing about kids is that you can always make more. So anyways it's a win-win but I see so many landlords just complete amateurs terminating contracts like this that otherwise could be 10 times more profitable. 